So firstly, on the profitability of your business. It comes down to begin with on to your sales and then your gross profit from those sales and then finally the amount of profitability that those gross profits contribute towards your overall costs. So on your sales, it's about increasing your sales as much as you can relative to if you did nothing through this. So how do you segment your customers so you can sell more to your customers who aren't impacted by what's going on compared to those who are significantly impacted? Or how do you identify the customers who are only impacted in the next three or four months but aren't impacted today or tomorrow? So if you have a lot of customers who are in the construction sector, they might not be impacted in the next week. So how about you try and sell more to them in the short term than what you might to other customers? Conversely, if you're selling to a pharmacist, now's an okay time for them, but over time their sales are gonna slow down. So you might wanna think about who you're selling what to in the short term versus the medium term. And then if you look at it and go, how do I bundle some services or products together to increase the amount that I sell to those customers in the short term? And then finally think about discounting. So over the last few days I've had a lot of conversations with customers about offering discounts and offering to, to give more to their customers and more often than not our advice on that has to be not to discount because if for example you have a 100% markup on whatever it is you're selling, if you offer a 20% discount on those sales, so 100% markup, 20% discount, you've got to pick up an extra 33% of new customers to make the discount worthwhile. And in today's environment, I couldn't necessarily recommend where you'd find another third of your customers from. So discounting for one becomes a really bad strategy in light of what we've been facing. But fundamentally, it's about understanding what the new normal is for the next wee while. And you know, that could be months, it could be a couple of weeks. So it's about identifying what your normal is and then how you respond. Fundamentally though, you're going to have a lower gross profit with the same level of overheads. So it's about then identifying what overheads you've got and whether they're a nice to have or whether they're a must have. So some things you can cut without having too much of an impact on your business, other things you're always going to have to cut. So if it's things that you need to keep to keep things ticking over, it's about ensuring you've got enough gross profit to cover those overheads. And then the, the fourth main area is your wages. Now obviously we've got the government subsidy to cover some wages, but it's not always a matter of simply jumping to pick that subsidy up, because for some businesses it's the wrong thing to do. Now I'm not saying you should avoid taking the subsidy, by all means look at it, but it's about wondering whether it's going to give you the results that you need financially for your business to keep things ticking over in the short to medium term. So for example, if you take the wage subsidy, you're undertaking that you're going to use your best endeavours to keep all of your staff at 80% employment. Now, there is a, a scenario for many businesses, particularly in hospitality or retail, where keeping your employees on an 80% roster simply isn't feasible. So for those businesses, we might be better off to look at not taking the subsidy. So while I recommend that every business looks at their eligibility for it and every business considers whether it's appropriate, it's simply not worthwhile taking for some businesses. So really understand where you're sitting and whether the subsidy is going to give you exactly what it is you're after. So once we've got our profit and loss in order and you can establish how much money you're going to be making during the next, the next wee while or during the new normal, it's about understanding the impact of that profit or loss on your balance sheet. So your balance sheet has two main elements and to recap your balance sheet simply shows what you owe people and what you own on the other hand. So as part of that, you've got two things. You've got a cash flow cycle, which is how quickly money's moving between the different elements on your balance sheet. And then you've got some debt. So it's about understanding how quickly the money will come in and then go out to fund things like IRD debt or bank loans or your creditors. So if we step back and look at your cash flow cycle in general, there's a whole series of elements that make up your cash flow cycle. So first of all, you have to take a dollar, you turn that into some inventory. So if you're selling beer, for example, you need to buy yeast as an ingredient that goes into the beer. That yeast then gets manufactured and goes through a brewing process and eventually gets sold once you've gone through your marketing phases. And then with that sale, you've then got to collect the money in. And once you've collected it in, you've then got your dollar back, which you then have to use some of that money to fund overhead, some of that money to repay debt, or some of that money to buy a new product or new inventory to keep your business going and to keep the money flowing around again. So. There's some elements of that cash flow cycle you can control. So if you're an accounting firm, for example, 
the element of your cash flow cycle that you can control is how quickly you finish a job. So if you're selling time, finish your jobs as quickly as you can. If you're in retail, you'd look at it and go, how do I maintain the lowest possible stock levels to keep the business ticking over and keep my shelves full without having too much cash tied up in stock? So there's those elements that you can control. Another element you can control is how quickly you issue invoices and how quickly you get your bills out the door. So it's all well and good to finish a job, but you've also got an invoice for the work you've done as well because no one's gonna pay you until they've issued the invoice. So the sooner that goes, the sooner you get paid. There's other elements though which you can't control. So over the coming period, some businesses might have an issue, for example, with their supply chain. So if you can't get the goods on your shelves to sell, or if you can't get your people in the door to do the jobs, you simply can't issue your invoices. So there's some supply chain issues coming. There might also be issues getting your customers to pay you. So collecting your accounts receivable or collecting your debtors could become challenging. So let's focus on the bits we can control in that cash flow cycle, which is how quickly we issue invoices, how quickly we get jobs done, how short we can make that time frame, and not become relaxed on the other areas like your debtors, but there are gonna be some debtors we need to be a little more lenient with, especially if they're long-term customers. So let's make sure we control what we do and focus on what we can control rather than focusing on the negative, which is how long it's taken everyone else to pay us. Because often for many businesses, they can make exactly the same level of profit, even with less cash flow, if they can get the money to spin quicker within their business. So a business with tight cash flow but a fast spin rate can make just as much money as a business that's flush with cash, but is simply a bit fat and lazy. So the tighter we can operate, the more money we can generate off, off tighter cash flow. And, and that's on us as business owners to control our own ships rather than pointing the finger at everyone else for, for paying us slightly. So once we've got the profitability down pat from our profit and loss report, once we've controlled our cash flow cycle, it's then about looking at your debt levels and who you owe money to. So there's a typical group of people we owe money to. IRD is one of them. Your creditors or the people you've purchased from is another. And then finally, the bank is the third. So for those guys, it's about communicating early and being really clear with how we communicate with them so that we can get them on board to support us when we need the help. And, and often people like the IRD and the banks have a really bad rap. Um, but often we can get better results from them and close to a guaranteed yes. If we approach them properly, we give them the full picture and we give them a really transparent plan about what we're, what we're going through. So for every business I know, I'd encourage them to have a really deliberate plan and a clear strategy that we share with the bank, that we share with IRD, because they will support us if we give them the information they need to support us. The other people that we need to be really careful with is our creditors or the people we owe money to based on our day-to-day -day trade. Now, for those guys, I would recommend that we pay them as we're able to, as we would in the normal course of business. So the risk is that no one pays anyone. We all hold on to our money as business owners, and that will cause the whole economy to, to grind to a halt. Maybe not immediately, but one way or another. So the more regular we can keep our day-to-day -day and business as usual payments, the better especially in the next few weeks, because if this drags into the next few months, which it potentially will, we would want to be relying on the goodwill of our creditors in a few months' time, simply or rather than chewing it all up today or tomorrow. So the clearer we can be with the IRD, the clearer we can be with the banks, and the clearer we can be with our creditors, the better we're all going to come out of this. The main thing, though, is not for you as the business owner to become a bank to your business. So when any business goes through hard times, be it as a result of a pandemic or a global financial crisis or, or anything, more often than not, the business owner simply tips into the business more and more and more of their own money. At this stage, I'd recommend against that to the extent you're able to, because you shouldn't be a bank to your business. If you're going to be lending money to your own business, you should be evaluating that in exactly the same way that a bank would evaluate lending money to your business. So don't simply write blank checks to your company to keep it afloat. And while more often than not, it feels like the right approach because it's easy, often you're, you're better to have a really robust conversation with your accountant to make sure that lending more and more money to support your business is the right thing to do. Then finally on debt levels, and for many businesses this feels a little counterintuitive, but we're recommending to hold off the 7th of May provisional tax payment, which is coming up in the next couple of months. So we would always recommend that 
the business owner put the money aside and ideally paid it into tax pooling rather than paying it directly to the IRD. And the reason for paying it into tax pooling rather than directly to the IRD is that if this thing drags out for another six months, we can easily get our money back from tax pooling and use that to support the cash flow of our business. If we pay it to the IRD, while they can be friendly and really supportive of what we're trying to achieve, it's really hard to get our money back. So tax pooling becomes a really great option um, for, for managing the tax component of our cash flow because it does give us more flexibility later down the track now. Don't jump to using tax pooling. It's something that you should definitely raise with your accountant and work the pros and cons of it through with them for your particular situation and your particular business. But fundamentally, if we approach the coming weeks in a really positive, transparent manner with all of our creditors and, and funders, and if we get our cash flow cycle moving as well as we can, and if we get our profitability as high as we can over the coming period, then we're all gonna come out in a better space. So fundamentally what we're recommending that people do over the coming couple of days is to get your house in order. So reconcile your zero account, understand how much you owe people, get that loaded into zero, make sure you've issued your invoices so that's showing the true position of your business. Then come up with a business as usual budget for the 2021 financial year, which kicks off in the next few days. And create that business as usual budget as if this whole thing had never happened. It's a business as usual for what your business would look like, but look at the spending from the ground up. So don't just copy what you did last year. Look at it in light of what you should be spending money on and cut the rest. Then start doing some scenario planning for both a profit and loss or a budget scenario and a cash flow scenario so you know exactly what your bottom line is going to look like. And look at those scenarios in both a 20%, 30% and 50% context in the terms of a drop in sales. So if you know what those worst case scenarios look like, then you're better able to make an informed decision about how to respond. So as part of those budgets or scenarios, you might look at your nice to have OPEX or your must have OPEX or operating costs, and then use those as a way to determine what you keep spending money on and what you pull back on. Because fundamentally, this budget and these scenarios are gonna feed the information that you give to your bank, the IRD, your creditors, potentially your landlord if you're looking at some rent holiday options or if you're asking for support from your landlord. But then fundamentally, it's gonna determine whether you take a business as usual approach to this, whether you look to put your, your business into a skeleton type structure or whether you go on a complete hiatus from, from business as usual to, to help you get through the next few periods. So fundamentally, how you approach the next wee while will determine sort of how you come out the back end of it because my real concern isn't so much for the next few months it's how businesses respond once everything does go back to normal whether you've got the strength on your balance sheet to buy more stock to sell to your customers or whether you've got the strength on your balance sheet to keep employing your team to get the job done so ultimately if we can come up with a plan that is financially resilient today and tomorrow then when this whole thing blows over we'll be in a much stronger position to move forward to hire again to buy again, to support our staff, to support our customers and, and to keep things ticking. But ultimately in leaders is, is to all of our businesses, it comes down to us not rose tinting things for ourselves and not rose tinting them for our staff because our staff need to know the truthful picture of what's going on and, and what the plan is for our respective businesses. But fundamentally, if we can give our businesses a plan, then we, we as business owners can sleep at night but also we can give our staff the confidence that we can lead them through this and that we can lead our businesses through this because fundamentally our businesses are the community that gives our staff the, the ability to keep on going. So that's on all of us as leaders in our business to, to kind of keep things ticking and to have a plan to get through not only the next few weeks, but the next few months as this blows through and then the months after that as we return to business as usual.